May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> Today is our annual celebration of World Mission Sunday. The day for this celebration was set uh, by our prayer book as the second to last Sunday of Epiphany, which among other things means that we're moving right along already in 2024, if you can believe it. Uh, next Sunday is the last Sunday of Epiphany, which means Lent <coughs> is right around the corner. So uh, 2024 is moving along. And for us to give prayerful thought to this day, I'm going to off alter my regular preaching style. Uh, and instead, what I want to do uh, during this time is one, lead us in a litany for mission, which you have inserted in your bulletin. Then I will read from a letter uh, written by Archbishop Foley regarding this day. And then I will close by making some brief uh, biblical and pastoral applications. <clears throat> so let's begin with the litany. You may remain seated, or if you would like to kneel, that's fine. It's a lengthy litany, so do what you're able and desiring to do. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Have mercy on us. God the Son, redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, sanctifier of the faithful. Have mercy on us for leaving the task of evangelism and mission undone. Forgive us, Lord. For attempting to engage in evangelism and mission in our own strength, neglecting the direction and aid of the Holy Spirit. Forgive us, Lord. For entering into mission situations unprepared. Forgive us, Lord. For our arrogance, when we have considered other people and cultures to be inferior to our own. Forgive us, Lord. That it may please you to plant your church in all the world, that the name of Jesus may be known and worshipped by all people. Hear us, Lord. To awaken a zeal for missions in the hearts of your people. Hear us, Lord. To send out laborers into your harvest, especially into the fields of the unreached. Yes. To bless the missions in all unevangelized areas of North America. Yes. To enable the restoration and expansion of your church in the Caribbean and Central and South America. Yes. To prosper the faith and practice of your church in Africa. Yes, Lord. To raise up faithful evangelists <clears throat> to rebuild the church in Europe. Yes, Lord. To increase the Christian witness among the people of the Middle East. Yes, Lord. To invigorate your witnesses in all Asia and the islands of the Pacific. Yes, Lord. To grant peace and stability to the Holy Land that the gospel may be both heard and obeyed. Yes, Lord. To relieve and protect all members of your church who suffer persecution for the faith throughout the world. Yes, Lord. To advance and prosper the ministry to refugees, immigrants, the poor, and the oppressed. Yes, Lord. To meet the spiritual and physical needs of the underprivileged of rural and urban areas. Yes, Lord. To bring faith to those who worship created things rather than the Creator. Yes, Lord. To shine the light of the gospel on all the unreached peoples of the world. Yes, Lord. To inspire faithful preaching of your holy gospel. 
to assist our missionaries and their families, both at home and abroad. To enlighten all seekers and strengthen all new converts. To guide bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who minister in your church. To shield all nations and people from the cruelty of racism and nationalism. To inspire vocation for service and sacrifice in your name throughout the world. To further educational work in schools everywhere. To bless medical, agricultural, and economic missions done to your glory. To inspire and assist all Bible translators that your word may be proclaimed in all tongues. Yes, to restore unity among all who love you. Yes, Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant the people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you would join me for this final prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Archbishop Foley, writing this letter to the churches of our province, Anglican Church in North America, begins his letter, Dear Brothers and Sisters in Christ, the late missiologist Andrew Walls noted that the global missionary movement of the 19th century led to the cultural and demographic transformation of Christianity in the 20th century. He further observed that the cross-cultural diffusion of the gospel, quote, is the lifeblood of historic Christianity. And it began with the apostles. They left all, they crossed cultures to share the gospel. And it has continued since. We, he goes on, in the Anglican Church in North America, ACNA, are the indirect beneficiaries of the 19th and early 20th century Anglican missionaries who left their families and homelands, crossed cultures, made disciples, and planted churches in the global south, being South America, Asia, and Africa particularly. When we needed, he says, when we needed rescue from the revisionist leadership of the Episcopal Church, it was the spiritual grandchildren of Anglican missionaries, the Global South, who threw us a lifeline. We serve a global God with a boundless heart for each of the 17,000 people groups on the globe. So on this World Mission Sunday, as your Archbishop, he says, I want to remind our province, ACNA, of the tried and true global Anglican mission partners with whom the ACNA churches can partner. And so he then goes on in his letter to list the present day global Anglican partners with whom we as Anglicans in ACNA serve. Uh, who are presently working to spread the gospel, as was continued in those early missionaries, all over the world to those 17,000 uh, people groups. 
Now, if you would like, to, what he, he gives a brief explanation of a, a description of some of these groups. And I'm going to mention them, but if you'd like to have further information about them, what I want to encourage you to do, and if you're interested, be ready to write down uh, some things. If you're interested in looking these up, you go to ACNA website, and you can just type in ACNA, A-C-N-A, or Anglican Church in North America, either one. Type it in on your, what do you call it? Browser. Search. Browser. Yeah, browser thing. I know what it is, I just don't always know what to call it. So type in ACNA there, and then they'll have a, 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 a row at the top of <coughs> words. One of them is more, not me, M-O-R-E. <laughs> it's got a down arrow. You click more, and underneath it you will see global missions. Hit global missions, and you will find all the partners. And you can click on any of the partners and read about them. So I encourage you to do that if you want to know more about them or even give uh, toward them, pray for them particularly, or even serve with them. That's what you can go uh, find out there. So uh, let me just list these, these uh, present-day uh, Anglican partners very briefly. One is New Wineskins Missionary Network. Many of you know them. They're the ones that put on the large... Uh, triannual conferences every three years. Uh, they are like the global hub for Anglican missions today. Uh, if you haven't been to one of their uh, conferences, I encourage you to try to do that. The next one is 2025 in September of that year. Um, if you're interested in short-term mission trips, there's a group called Sharing of Ministries Abroad. And like the military, they use acronyms, S-O-M-A, Sharing of Missions Abroad. SOMA are the short-term mission uh, partner. If you're interested in longer-term missions and how you can so support, pray for them, etc., cetera, uh, it's the Society of Anglican Missionaries and Senders. S-A-M-S, -S, SAMS, uh, and they serve churches around the globe uh, more long-term. And then there is the Anglican Frontier Mission. It is their mission to disciple and plant churches among people groups that don't have a church or Christian witness. Uh, one of our own, we pray for them every Sunday. Herb and Mary Hand, he was a pastor over in Memphis for a number of years and has served our diocese and our local convocation of churches over the years. Uh, they felt the call to leave that pastorate and go serve in North Africa, which they're there now serving. And we support them uh, with a small amount from our church and I know some of you individually do. Uh, so they are serving with AFM, Anglican Frontier Missions. The, the Archbishop continues in his letter, we were all shocked by Hamas's attack on Jewish civilians and the subsequent bloodshed. The church's ministry among Jewish people, CMJ, has been sharing and modeling Jesus' love to his Jewish compatriots since 1809. Now more than ever, CMJ, Church's Ministry Among Jewish People, uh, is looking for partners. And then finally, the Anglican Relief and Development Fund. Uh, they partner with provinces, Acne is a province, Nigeria is a province, Kenya is a province, all these places have, there are many provinces around the world. They partner with these provinces around the world um, to fund uh, development programs and when there's a natural disaster, they come in and provide relief. Our own Nancy Norton, uh, Joe's wife, retired in 2014, uh, having served there as Canon Nancy Norton and as the executive director of AR uh, 
DF. So they have a wonderful ministry if you'd like to support them. So these are the major partners, and then when you go onto the site, you'll see many sub subgroups under those. And these are our distinctly Anglican organizations that serve the gospel globally, and they've been doing so uh, for many decades. The Archbishop concludes his letter, Finally, I want to leave you with the prayer for mission that we pray each week in our liturgy. That prayer is, And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. So we are ACNA, and we are the beneficiaries, as he says in his letter, of those Anglican missionaries of the 19th and early 20th centuries who left England, left their families, left their culture, and they went to places like Nigeria. They went all over the world, but they went to the global south to places like Nigeria, Kenya, Rwanda, and so forth. And we benefited from them because I was ordained as an Anglican through Cana. C-A-N-A, -A, Convocation of Anglicans in North America who were under the Episcopal jurisdiction, that is the oversight of a bishop in Nigeria. Because at the time we had split from the Episcopal Church and we didn't have any Episcopal oversight. So the Global South Christians, the Global South Churches came to the aid of all these conservative Christians who left the Episcopal Church and gave us Episcopal oversight. And over time we grew to the point that we now have our own province in America, Anglican Church in North America, with our own bishops and we have an archbishop. And that's where we came from and God has blessed through those original missionaries. So as to world missions then, here at All Saints, what are we to do? Well, I think you could say that we are, at this point in our lives, we are primarily senders, givers, and prayers. That's what we do. Most of us at our age and station probably aren't going to be called to the mission field. Some of you still might. Fred did not Fred. Uh, her and Mary did in their 60s. Uh, so it could happen. But most of us are probably uh, more likely to support missions as we're supposed to by sending others, by giving them our resources, and by offering our prayers. But what we can all do as missionaries is be witnesses where we are. When we recite the Jubilate, if you are in the habit of doing morning prayer, you have that choice early on to do the Medite or the Jubilate. If you say the Jubilate, taken from Psalm 100, there's a sentence in there that says, be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. That's what we're to be about. Make it your practice this year to speak good of God in the name, in the company of others. Not just at morning prayer, not just privately in your own room at home, but in the company of others. That's, that's what a missionary is. So how can you be a missionary where you are? Well, again, speak good of God's name. Give thanks. Be a thankful person. Praise God in the presence of others as often as you can. Try to convey a spirit of contentment and not be cantankerous. We have all the reason to be contented. Why is it we tend to major on the negative, don't we? I mean, it's easy to complain. The Bible says Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. 
If that doesn't give us a reason to be content, I don't know what will. We have every reason to be positively contented. <coughs> and then out of that happy, contented spirit, then we can invite others who would be more likely to then come to our church. <coughs> That's a, a way to be a missionary. Because we know that people here will hear the gospel of grace. They're going to hear it through the liturgy. They're going to hear it through song. They're going to hear it through sermon. Be a witness. Another way to be a missionary where you are is serve your church. You see, no one becomes a missionary by going to the mission field. That doesn't make you a missionary. The mission field begins where you are. If you're not a missionary, if you're not a servant in your church, you're not likely to be a servant elsewhere. So serve here. And we have many in our congregation, many who are the epitome of service. I think of this week, I thought of O.J. and Barbara, the epitome of service. They're always here. They always are willing to give a hand. I came in yesterday afternoon. The place looked beautiful. We've got the altar guild, too. We know what they do. But the, the place over here was set up, thanks to Bruce and everything. All the details were set. They get the bull. I mean... I could go on, there are many, but I thought of them this week and am grateful for O.J. and Barbara because what they do is not always out front. You don't even know half of what they do, but they do. Um, so you can do that. You can serve in the kitchen. You know, we want to think that missions is sexy work, you know, the, the pretty stuff out front, you know. It's not, not you know. Somebody's got to do all this other stuff. And if you can, do it. Offer a hand in the kitchen. Bring snacks. You know, we all want to eat snacks, but somebody brings them, right? Be willing to do that. <coughs> Potluck Sunday. We gather because we want to eat together. Well, bring food. <laughs> you know, that's what we do. It's a way of service. That's you being a servant. You're really being a missionary. Missionaries do that in Africa. They prepare to eat when they get together. They serve each other and so forth. You don't have to go there to do it. Do it here. And then check up on others. It's amazing. I'm so impressed by this congregation of people who look in on other people without any of us knowing. They're just checking on them, seeing how people are doing. That's missionary work. And then we have local outreach. We do some things, too, outside the body that you can be involved in if you would like to. We have a Harvey's Chapel that we talk about often. Uh, Martha Nichols has kind of headed that up lately. Uh, primarily now we're serving the youth summer camp. Uh, but there you can give to that. You can pray for Harvey's Chapel. You can go to Martha and say, what else can I do to help? There's all kinds of ways, but you have to kind of be proactive if you want to get involved. Then there's Jackson House. Thanks to Bob Mongrain, who's here somewhere. Uh, Bob has been very faithful over the years to make sure we continue this ministry of serving uh, those who need food uh, down in Hot Springs. They serve 100 plus people, I guess, every day. I know they do when we go, and, and they serve Monday through Friday, I think, down there. Um, so if you would like to help, Bob, I know we serve uh, on the 12th. This is our next time. And a lot of our regular guys aren't going to be there that day because they're sick or gone or something. Uh, so if you want to help serve in on Jackson House, it's been a men's ministry for the most part, but anybody is welcome to help. Uh, see Bob. Joel's not here today, but you could see him as well in serving in that capacity. We have the Oakmont Ministry downtown that Joel has uh, served in for years, and Sammy Joe with, with the Philly feed. So there are ways to do that. We have Salvation Army. Blair has a representative for Salvation Army at, at Christmas time. And then we have the Angel Tree ministry that's part of that. 
that I think Margaret has helped with this year, and I know Teresa has helped with, OJ got that started a few years ago. Um, we have the quilt ministry local, locally for mostly our church uh, through Sharon Gunn and, and other ladies. We have the landscape team, you know, we have a beautiful place here. It's amazing how many people say, that's a nice little church you got over there. And it looks good, you know, because we work at it. And the outside looks good too. So you can serve in that way. You can see Gary or you can see Joel or David uh, or Ark who's been helping with that as well uh, and figure out how to get involved. And then we have the Memorial Garden team. You know, we, we have our own uh, cemetery, you know. In the old days, the churches, they had these big cemeteries that were attached. Well, we do too. Uh, we, we may look a little different, do it a little differently, but it's the same principle uh, that our own congregation can choose to be buried here locally at our own church. And there is a group of people that help maintain that and keep up with the records. That's a way to serve. On and on and on we could go. There are things you can do um, to serve. Uh, because I would say the three things to keep in mind is going, is being a missionary. But in some cases it's staying too. Going, gospeling, and giving. That's what a missionary is. They go where they can, they make sure they're, they're driven by the gospel, they share the gospel when they can, and they give. They give of themselves, they give of their means, that others might be helped so that in the end, they too can know Jesus. We don't talk about ourselves in our Christian liturgy until the very end. Throughout, it's all about Jesus, all about the triune God. But at the end, we do talk about ourselves where we say that prayer that the Archbishop mentioned. Send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses, missionaries of Christ our Lord. May God burden each of us this year to give witness of the grace and truth and goodness of Jesus Christ and to serve his church. Finally, a couple of verses from Psalm 145. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of men your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. May we make it our desire to share these glorious deeds of God. And what are they? I mean, sometimes you might get caught and not know what to say. Commit to memory part of the general thanksgiving. You know, we say it in morning prayer. It reminds us, what are these great deeds? Here they are. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. Be a witness to the greatness and the goodness of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.